With just days to go before lawmakers have to adjourn, there is one bill that is the subject of intense work to keep it from being defeated. A bill that would have major impact on any Oklahoman who needs long-term nursing care, except possibly those who live in the state's veteran centers. State Representative Jeannie McDaniel authored House Bill 2582. It's a measure that's sought by the state health department to require any personnel who come into contact with people receiving long-term nursing care to be fully backgrounded and their fingerprints run through state and federal databases. It's home health care, it's nursing homes, it's hospice, it's uh, daycare, if you will, adult daycare. This involves a lot of different groups. Representative McDaniel says opposition to the fingerprint bill is based on the costs involved, $10 to the prospective employee, $4 to the employer. So they're very concerned that when the grant runs out, they'll be left holding the cost of this and it'll be in statute, they'll be required to pay it. But one group that isn't included under the proposed new state law is Oklahoma's seven veteran centers, the subject of recent special news reports by OETA and the Journal Record newspaper. And any talk of including them apparently is being viewed as threatening the overall bill's chances of survival. Representative McDaniel says the measure is already on thin ice, especially in the Senate. This may be the last bill we have in this title of law in these final days of session to insert the language. So um, there, is, there is some thought that that may be a knee-jerk reaction and a temporary not really solve the problem. If it would solve one problem or one person from being abused, that would be enough. Representative Joe Dorman says House Bill 2582 is the perfect bill to insert new language that would return the state's veteran centers to oversight by the state health department. He agrees it may be a quick fix in light of the abuse, neglect, and deaths uncovered by OETA in the journal record, but he says right now that may be the best the legislature can do. Because we don't want to wait eight months for a bill to come up next year. So at least give us a little bit of peace of mind, especially with the stories that have been run lately. I think people want that assurance that their relatives are being taken care of properly in these facilities. A flurry of discussions is expected over the few remaining days of the legislative session. Some serious back and forth between lawmakers and others to reach a consensus on whether to include the veteran centers under House Bill 2582. With the recent stories about the the sad situations which have occurred in the veteran centers. There has been a, a cry to take these back under the jurisdiction of the health department. If, if we can just do something this year to provide a little bit of oversight, it goes a long way to the next step, which would be the study and seeing what we need to do that is thorough and proper to make sure that these veterans are taken care of. Some see the provision as a killer. Others see it as a savior for the bill. Representative Joe Dorman had hoped politics would not overtake a bill that supporters believe would improve protection for all of Oklahoma's elderly. The health and safety of our veterans has always been a nonpartisan issue in Oklahoma. Democrats and Republicans alike have worked to make sure that we provide the things that we expect are owed to our veterans. And I would hope politics would not come into play in this. There's no need to hold the veterans as a bargaining chip to get something passed. It was back in 2003 that the legislature was convinced by Philip Driscoll, former executive director of the Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs, and Norman Lamb, the former secretary of Veterans Affairs, to remove the centers from state health department oversight. Esther Hauser is the long-term care ombudsman for the Department of Human Services, Aging Services Division. They pushed the legislation. It was on their initiative. The reason that um, was widely spread about that was that one of the provisions of licensure includes a review of plans for major renovations by the health department's staff, the, the architectural and life safety code staff. At the time, Hauser says the ODVA had made major renovations to the center in Tallahena without consulting the health department renovations that did not meet health department rules and required major cost to repair. Since being taken out of the health department's oversight, ODVA has made major renovations to several facilities and built a new one in Lawton. The Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs also stopped paying for a second set of inspections and the U.S. Veterans Administration privatized theirs. 
these are still citizens of the state of Oklahoma that live in these facilities, in addition to which they are veterans who defended us. So they should have entitlement to the protection of that additional inspection and the enforcement process, which is considerable from the State Health Department. We expected the federal government to do checks, but the way I understand, they actually notify the facilities and tell them that we're coming in to take a look. Well, of course everything's going to be okay if they're going to tell them in advance. Retired Major General Rita Aragon is now Oklahoma's Secretary of Veterans Affairs. She agrees that oversight of the centers must be increased. Because the oversight is supposed to be conducted by the commission by law, which is one of the reasons the governor has asked that that kind of oversight be changed because there's no recourse. Those are the most vulnerable of our warriors. We owe them the very best care that they can get. The OETA journal record reports also showed how veteran center administrators have used the process known as involuntary discharge as a way to force patients who ask too many questions or raise too many issues out of their facilities. Another process that long-term care ombudsman Esther Hauser says her agency has tried to get the Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs to change, a change that also would involve the health department. We've asked ODVA to at least contract with the state health department to use the hearing officer that's used in standard nursing homes, which would provide an independent appeal for veterans uh, facing eviction, but no move has been made. For now, Representative McDaniel says she is talking with the Health Department, General Aragon, and others to determine what to do with House Bill 2582. But at the moment, prospects for the proposal and bringing any change to oversight of the state's veteran centers rest with the political will of state lawmakers, which at the moment is largely focused on finalizing the budget and getting on with election season.